Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Advanced Workflow Engine to not only retrieve a directory listing from a remote site uh, using FTP or SFTP, but also to manipulate that directory listing and find the latest file and then download it. So this is, uh, this is actually in conjunction with another video uh, that, used, that showed how to actually retrieve this uh, variable listing. Now, I just want to show you what we're working with here on the remote side. So I have another uh, virtual machine open here. I'm going to use uh, QFTP to connect to this site and show you the directory listing that we have on the remote side. So you can see here we have a file, an older file, and then the oldest file. So what we want to do, let's say you have a process that only wants to retrieve the latest file but can't delete any of the files. So there's always going to be files there, but we only want the latest file. Well, that's what this AWE is actually useful for. So I'm going to go ahead and import a pre-configured AWE and just walk you through the steps that I did to uh, create this AWE. So just bringing up the editor now. Now, I have a couple of regions here, but uh, basically the first part is just going to be the initialization of a set number of variables, uh, variables that we're going to need to actually connect to the host, uh, or just make it a little bit prettier so you can use this AWE and just make a copy of it and then just replace the variables in, in case you have multiple hosts that you connect to to actually run this process. So you're going to see my host name, my username, uh, the remote folder of where I'm actually connecting to. Uh, I don't believe it's actually used in this particular AWE. Uh, local folder, I don't think we're using that either. But uh, a variable called var file, that's going to be our destination file name or, or our final file name after we do the manipulation of the variables. Uh, this is a counter that's actually used for the processing, and the file date is actually also used for the processing. So if you see here, I have this second region. This is the actual legwork. Uh, of the AWE. So the first thing we do is, I'm just going to open this up for you, is we log on using that hostname, username, and the password. Now you can't use a variable in the password, so you're always going to have to type that. Pretty standard log on here. Now then we send the long list, and this is covered in another uh, in another video, so this one we won't actually go over this, but um, you're just going to get the long file list and we're just using um, all, all files as our parameters. You're going to loop through that data set, again, covered in the other video. Uh, now, this is where our logic comes into play. So we're going to check that, vial, uh, that var file counter and make sure that it's zero. And this is going to be the first bit that tells us we need to start initializing it. So if it's zero, we're going to set that var file date to the value FTP file date. So these are all built-in variables. So this is, the, this is a built-in uh, date value of the remote. Uh, remote date stamp and then it's basically just going to set the var file uh, var file to that value so this is going to be our current file and then it does a second check to see if the if the date value is less than the current date value so if it's less than what we want to do is we want to basically set the new file date to that new file the new the file date va variable to that new file date and the file file name to that new file name so, or if it's greater than. So if it's greater than, that means it's newer. So we're just making sure that the, uh, the file that we're actually looking at at this moment is greater than the uh, previous file in, in terms of date and then setting it if it is. And then it's just gonna increment the var file counter by one so that this check never happens again. So this is just basically populating our first variable and this is the part that does the actual checking. After that, it's just going to download that var file value, and uh, that'll be it. So, um, and then log off just to clean up the session. So let me kind of show you how this works here. Again, the file.txt is the newest file, so that should be the file that it's downloading. So it's going to download it to C temp, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and run it just to make sure that it does its thing. Now, likewise, you could find the oldest file just by switching this sign to a less than symbol. So let's check our ctemp. Yep, you can see we got the latest file. So uh, that, that seemed to work pretty well. 
So what we'll do is we'll go back over here just to kind of prove that it works and we will uh, modify this file so that it's a little bit newer. So uh, my file on the desktop should be even newer, so I'm going to go ahead and upload it and just verify that it has a later timestamp. It certainly does, um, so it's going to go ahead and have that 444 timestamp. So should, this should now be the uh, newest file. So let's go ahead and run back through it. And we should be able to check and see that we have the even newer file only and not any of the other files. So as you can see, this, uh, this AWE works pretty well and I'll include this AWE with the uh, video. Thanks.